Hi friends. Remember how in circle time we talked about a Native American village and I showed you this picture? Well today we're going to focus on a couple of things, namely shelu, that means corn, and also the shelter that the families live in. Now this one is the kind of shelter that Native Americans around here in New England lived in. But in this book called Itsy Shelu, which means green corn or young corn, they live in a different kind of house. So I want you to watch for some of the things in this story, because we're gonna talk about them later. This is called it Itsy Shelu, and it's a Cherokee harvest festival. So Cherokee is a, one of the Native American tribes or group of families that lived together. And this is written by Daniel Pennington. He's the author. And the illustrator is Don Stewart. He did the drawings. Little Wolf blinked as he looked out at the bright September morning village bustled with activity. Tonight is the feast. He remembered he saw mother cooking by the fire. Starting late this afternoon, the entire village would gather to celebrate another day of Itsi Shelu, the Green Corn Festival. The celebration lasted four days. Each year, just when the first years of corn turned sweet and yellow, the great festival was held. Itsi Shelu was a feast of Thanksgiving and it marked the beginning of the new year. Now we've talked about Thanksgiving in the fall when there's a harvest festival of all the different foods and they prepare them for storing for the winter. But this is early, so probably summertime when those green ears of corn just are ready to start eating. Did you also notice that I, that this little boy's name is Little Wolf? That's his Native American name. Throughout the village, everyone was hard at work. Little Wolf's sister, Skye, finished eating her breakfast of beans and shelu. Mother made the shelu from some old corn harvested last year. It wasn't right to eat harvest the newly harvested corn before the Itsy Shelu festival. Little Wolf, where are you going? You're not going to sleep through Itsy Shelu, are you? Teased Skye as she walked toward the river with her empty clay water pot. Here she goes, and her name is Skye. What do you think's happening over here? Do you remember what this is? It's a log that where they grind the corn. Remember when we did that last fall? In the morning, everyone in the village bathed before starting their day. On his day to bathe in the river, Little Wolf stopped and peeked into Mother's cooking pot. Is this for the feast tonight? Little Wolf asked. The food smelled so good made his stomach growl. Yes, and I will cook two of your favorites as soon as father brings back the fish and turkey. If you're hungry, little wolf, have some shelu and some tuya, but first take your bath. Now, tuya are beans. So we have shelu and tula, two of the sisters in of the three sisters. Remember who they are? Corn, Beans and, do you remember? Squash was the third sister that grew together. Little Wolf stopped to tickle his sister's chin. Are you ready for the festival, Sutega? Sutega cooed and smiled at Little Wolf from her cradle board. Mother carried Sutuga on her back in the cradle board. Sometimes she leaned the board against their house or under a shady tree. Because the cradle board was always close by, 
Mother was able to keep watch over Boosty, which is a baby, and still get her work done. So there she is. This keeps the sun off her eyes and she can rest in her cradle board. And this is what a cradle board looks like when a baby's not in it. And mothers would sometimes also lean them or hang the cradle board with the baby in it on the tree like a swing. And the baby could swing safely and they'd rock the baby to sleep. Little Wolf gobbled down his breakfast and then ran to see Grandmother. She was making a pair of de la Sulo, which are footwear, or also known as moccasins. They were made of soft deer skin. Grandmother, are you sure they'll be finished by this afternoon? Asked Little Wolf. Grandmother smiled gently and said, just as I promised you, Little Wolf, Today, you will wear your new De La Sulu. Don't worry. See how she's stitching them with leather? And the needle is probably a bone from a fish or another kind of animal. She might use that uh, a sharp bone to poke a hole in the tough leather. We still all use leather on our shoes because it's so durable. Returning with the fresh ama, ooh, ama, another Cherokee word. What do you think that means? Were you thinking water? If you did, you're right. Say ama. Good, that means water. Sky happily sang out to her brother. Hello, sleepyhead. Sky was a big help to her family. She worked in the garden and went to the forest to gather berries and nuts. She sewed deerskin clothes, but her favorite work was making clay pottery. Everyone in the village wanted one of Skye's beautiful clay pots. See you later, Skye, called Little Wolf as he ran off to find his friend. Do you remember when we made little pinch pots out of clay? That was fun. In the forest, Little Wolf found Little Buffalo, his best friend, throwing a wooden spear. He was practicing his hunting. The older people, the older men and grandfathers and uncles patiently taught the boys how to hunt and fish. You cannot be skillful, skillful hunters and fishermen unless you know exactly how the animals live, the older people explained to the boys. So the boys learned to carefully observe the ways of the animals. One day, the boys studied a spider spinning its web. This helped the boys learn to weave webbed fishnets. See the web? If you've ever seen a fishnet, it looks very similar to that. Soon they would begin taking net making lessons from water spider, which is another Native American name of someone who was older and a teacher. No one else in the whole tribe could make nets as skillfully as water spider. What a good name for someone who teaches and makes nets. Little Buffalo and Little Wolf hid in the underbrush. Look, whispered Little Wolf. Ahui, ahui. In silence, they watched the deer until it bounded away. This is ahui. It's the Cherokee word for deer. I wish I were old enough to hunt, sighed Little Wolf. What a prize that deer would have been for Itsi Shelu. When the boys became real hunters, they would use spears, bows, and arrows, and blowguns. A blowgun was a hollow cane from which a sharp dart was blown. Powerful lungs were required to project or send the dart flying. It took much practice and hard work 
to become a great hunter. And they really needed to learn how to hunt to gather their food. Get your Gaddy Yosti stick, Little Wolf called to Buffalo. Little Buffalo laughed. Do you want to lose again? Not a chance, boasted Little Wolf. I've been practicing with my uncle, so be prepared. Gata Yoshti was a favorite game played by the boys. It helped them to improve their throwing skills. So here are their sticks and here's the ring. They throw the stick near a rolling stone or sort of a wheel-shaped stone. And the object, what they were trying to do was throw to where the spot where that stone would stop rolling. So he's gonna throw it, and if he's closer to where the stone stops rolling, he'll win. The late afternoon sun signaled the time for everyone in the village to gather for the feast and celebration. Before they left their homes, they swept the houses clean and put out all the fires, and each family took some of the freshly picked corn to the feast. I hope everyone will notice my new moccasins, thought Little Wolf, who was intently watching his feet as he walked. The people sat down outside the council house and inside the elder lit something that symbolized the new year. Then he said a prayer to the great creator. Thank you for a year of good harvest and hunting. We hope the new year will again provide us with food. We must forget any quarrels that we have between us so that we may start the new year together with a happy spirit. Let the feast begin. After eating lots of food at the harvest feast, everyone began to relax. The light of the blazing sunset glowed in the western sky. Sundown announced that it was time for the next set of dances to begin. The dancers performed until sunrise. It was dark when the Sundan sundown dances finished, and it was finally time for Sky's favorite part of Itse Shelu, story time. Her grandfather was one of the village storytellers. Eagerly, she asked about what story he would be telling. Sky and Littlefoot were asleep soon after grandfather finished his story. Mother stayed awake through the night talking with her neighbors. When the eastern horizon began to turn pale, Mother gently called, so it was probably the middle of the night. Sky, little wolf, wake up. The green corn dance will soon begin. Sleepily, the children sat up. Then the drumming began and the singing began. The slow, solemn corn dance began. One of the dancers wore tortoise shell rattles on her ankles that went claddle, claddle, claddle as she stepped in rhythm to the drum. Do you see the turtle shell? The turtle shells, so there's probably two of them and they clap together and make a sound as she steps. The sacred dance was a prayer of thanksgiving for this year's corn. The dance was timed to end just as the sun rose. So it's the next day. And sunrise symbolizes springtime, the season when next year's corn would be planted. Little Wolf and Sky hardly breathed as the powerful mood of the dance enfolded them. When the green corn dance ended, it was time to go home. The family walked home in the quiet beauty of dawn. Yudsi carried a glowing coal from the New Year fire. 
Yudsi is another name for mother. She carried it in a special clay pot. She would use it to start the family's New Year fire. It was her duty to keep the fire burning for a whole year. The fire could not be extinguished until next year's Itsi Shelu celebration. Sky and Little Wolf were asleep almost before they snuggled under their blankets. Sky, sighed Little Wolf. Someday I hope I will be as clever as a rabbit or a wolf. Bootsy, the last to fall asleep, smiled and whispered, sweet dreams, my children, happy new year. And that is the story of a Cherokee Harvest Festival and it's called Itsy Shelu. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember some of the things you learned about in the book, because we're gonna be doing some activities that are similarly related to those.